This is Dr. Shahan Sesame Meeks, and I am sick and cook. Today we're going to be cooking the Danielson Domain and Tess. So, what is the Danielson Domain? The Danielson Domains were created by Charlotte Danielson. There are four domains that help teachers strive to be the best educator they can be. And Tess is the Teacher Excellence Support System, which is a self evaluation tool and support system <laughs> for licensed teachers. It works in use with the Danielson Domain. Okay, the first of the four domains is planning and preparation. There are six main portions to it. The first portion is demonstrating knowledge of content and pedagogy, during which you will show content and the structure of the discipline, prerequisite relationships, and the content related pedagogy. So, this portion over here shows knowledge, content, and pedagogy. Uh, you will demonstrate knowledge of your students, which is this brain. And then, uh, this is things like the learning, pro how they have the learning process, adolescent development, uh, their interest in their cultural heritage, uh, setting instructional outcomes, which is this right here. It's supposed to be a weight. Um, knowledge of your resources. Coherent instruction. So that your students can understand you and designing your student assessments. You want it to be an assessment that is usable, uh, congruent with instructional outcomes. So make sure that the assessment goes along with the outcome. Now, you can't really see it very well because my head bubble is above it, unfortunately. But the most dominantly, this most dominantly pertains to the SOE conceptual framework of knowledge, but dabbles in pedagogy. This is because the teacher must be knowledgeable of the content as well as how to teach it. The second domain is the classroom environment. This involves five portions, the first of which is creating an environment of respect and report, uh, which the teacher interacts with the students, including both words and actions, and the students interact with other students. Second is establishing a culture for learning, so you teach the importance of the content and the learning and teach the students to have pride in their work. Third is the manage the classroom procedures. A classroom will not run smoothly if you don't have smooth procedures. It may seem like it's going to take up a lot of time to go over all this, but you're gaining time in the end. Fourth is to manage student behavior. Students, once again, thrive off of knowing what their expectations are. They want to know what is expected of them. And fifth is the physical space. Space. <laughs> um, they want to feel safe. Students aren't going to learn if they don't feel safe. The second domain, classroom environment, mostly pertains to the SOE conceptual framework of diversity. This is because it creates an environment of respect no matter the background of the student. The third domain is instruction. This involves five main portions. The first of which is communication with students, mostly, um, which is the expectations for learning, the directions for activities, any explanations of content, and the use of oral and written language. The, th the second part is question and discussion techniques. Um, what is the quality of your questions? What is your discussion techniques? And what student participation is there? The third is engaging the students in learning, which is activities and assignments, how you group your students, uh, the instructional materials and resources that you use, and the structure of the classroom itself. How do you pace yourself and how is your classroom set up? Because the classroom structure actually affects the way the classroom is taught. For example, if you have rows of desks, student aren't, students aren't going to feel like they can speak to each other quite so easily. And so there's not quite an environment for learning. It's still a useful way if necessary, but it's not quite the best way. Um, and then, got off track. Uh, the fourth section is using your assessment, which is what type of assessments do you use? What is your criteria? How do you monitor student learning? Which would be your uh, formative assessment, so you can make sure that students are staying on track. Um, what is your feedback from students? And have students do self-assessment. Now, as you'll see over here, 
we have two tables, and at the one table, these students are holding up a red card, and these students are holding up a green card. Now, this is students both self-assessing them, assess, assessing themselves, and this is feedback. Uh, this teacher is speaking to these students, so these students understand it. So they have their green card up, but these students don't understand it. So they're assessing themselves and saying, we don't know. And so they have their red card up, so the teacher knows that once she's done with this table, she needs to come over here and help them. And then the last portion is flexibility and responsiveness. Um, how can you adjust your lesson once you've performed your formative assessment and understood that the, the students aren't quite getting it? Uh, what is your response to students and how persistent are you? The fourth domain, oh, I forgot part. I forgot to say that this domain uh, pertains to the SOE conceptual framework of pedagogy. Uh, this is because, obviously, it is mostly with how to teach and assess your students in the most beneficial and time-conducive way possible. Okay, the fourth domain is professional responsibility. This is how you reflect on your teaching, how you keep your records, make sure they're accurate, the way you communicate with their families, and how you participate with your colleagues, um, that you make sure you continue to develop professionally, meaning you keep going to class, once you've got your degree, you can't just stop because the times are going to change and you're going to have outdated methods of teaching. And then how you show your professionalism, which is your code of ethics. There are eight code of ethics, and you need to know them all. Uh, so obviously, this one's called professional responsibilities, so this pertains to the SOE conceptual framework of professionalism. Um, now, I'd like to go ahead and say that all of the pictures in this uh, PowerPoint was provided by Dr. Shahan's class, excuse me, assessment techniques. Uh, and these are not my photos. I mean, I took these photos, but they're not, they're not my work. And I'd like to thank them for letting me use their photos. And have a good day.